Hello and welcome to this tutorial video from London Museum Development. My name is Alec Ward and I'm the Museum Development Officer for Digital and Communications. So in this video we're going to take you through how to use the free online image editing platform Pixlr. There are two versions of this platform, Pixlr X, which is what we're going to be taking you through, and Pixlr E which is basically more similar to programs like Photoshop or GIMP. On both platforms you can do similar things, but Pixlr X is a bit easier to use. And for people who are looking for an introduction to image editing, I think uh, Pixlr X is very much the platform for them. Once you've had a go with Pixlr X, I think you'll be more than confident to then give Pixlr E a try. So the first thing you want to do is go to the website pixlr.com. That's P-I-X-L-R.com. And then the first, uh, web page that you'll be greeted by is the Pixlr X platform, which is the one that we'll be using. Once you've opened this website, if you've used it before, you'll be greeted with some of your previous projects. If you've not, then the first thing you want to do is create new. So you can create new and choose the size of image you'd like. If you have an image that you wanted to work on and edit, you can open it. So I'm going to open an image that I downloaded from the website Pixabay, which is a free image platform. All of the images on there can be used open source. So once you've selected your image, you can then choose uh, whether it's Ultra HD, Full HD or suitable for the web. Depending on the size of uh, the canvas that you choose, depends on what you want to do with the image. So if it's something that you are going to publish on your website, for instance, you might want to go for web scale. Basically, it means that the image file size will be smaller and be much better for loading on web. If you're looking for something that you want to print, then maybe you want to go for Ultra HD. I'm going to uh, leave it on Ultra HD for now, so have it near to the original size. So once you've opened your image, it will then appear on the canvas here. You've got some different options to the right and the left. I'm going to take you through some of those different tools quickly now. So before we get started making any edits, the first thing I want to do is just take you through the UI, the user interface. So you can zoom in and zoom out on your image here. Depending on the type of mouse you use, you can also use the um, scroll button in the middle to zoom in and zoom out. If you zoom in quite close up here, you can also move whereabouts on the image you're zooming in on. You've also got undo and redo down here. So if you make any mistakes, you can click those to undo or redo your work. You can also obviously use control Z or command Z for undoing on a Mac or Windows PC. The other thing that you've got over here is the different layers. So when you start adding things like text files or images like logos, for instance, they'll be added as different layers and you can highlight those. So remove them from the image. Um, you can also duplicate layers. Uh, you can delete layers. You can change their transparency. There's lots of different things you can do with the layers. We'll look at that in a bit more detail later on in the video. Over here, you've got all your various different tools. This uh, takes you to the home screen. So if you wanted to go back to edit a different image, you can click that and that will take you home. Um, here you've got the uh, properties where you can change the size of the canvas that you're working on. So if you wanted to make the canvas itself smaller or bigger. Here you've got the arrange tool. Uh, this is where you can change the setting of individual layers, um, like its size, aspect, uh, transparency. Down here you've got crop, where you can crop the image uh, or layers. Down here you've got cut out, which is where you can cut out sections of the layer. So for instance, what we're going to do later on is remove this skyline from this image. You've got adjust here, where you can adjust the colors, vibrancy, brightness, etc. of different layers. Filter, where you can blur, sharpen, pixelate. Uh, the entire layer. Effect, you can uh, use the effect tool to add different effects to your image, similar to an Instagram filter. Liquify, and um, this basically enables you to change the size of areas on your image. Retouch, uh, lets you blur, sharpen, retouch um, specific areas of your image. Um, you could even use this tool to blur the entire background using this feature by hand. Drawing, you can basically add lines, shapes, and erase them with this tool. The text here sort of does what it says on the tin. You can add text to your image. Add an element. So this allows you to add borders, shapes, stickers, and all provided by Pixlr. And then finally, you've got add image. And this is where you can upload other images, either from Pixlr's stock base or your own images if you want to, for instance, logos, or if you had something cut out that you wanted to add in, uh, you can do that through this tool. Okay, so now that we've had the chance to look through some of these tools and the user interface, I'm going to take you through some of the things that you might be doing on your images when you edit them using this platform. So the first thing we're going to do is add in a logo. 
So to add an image, you click on Add Image. If you have an image from a website, you can add in the URL. But if you have the image on file, you click Browse. So once you've selected the image that you want, it will then add it into the image that you're working on. So I'm going to resize this using the blue squares. You can also rotate the image if you wish. So I'm going to make this slightly smaller and I'm going to put this in the top left hand corner. So now that I've added my logo, the next thing I'm going to do is show you how you can add shapes. So what I'm going to do is add a shape behind this logo to just sort of block it out, maybe make it look a little bit neater. So you want to go to drawing and you want to go to the shape tool. In here you have lots of different tools that you can use for drawing on your image. And you've got the brush tool so you can paint. You've got the eraser tool so that you can rub out. You've got the pen tool so that you can write things if you wish. And then finally you've got the shape tool. So I'm going to go for a slightly gray background. So I've toggled it so that it fills, so that my uh, shape will have a color on the inside. And go for a gray color. As you can see, as I'm moving it around, the color's changing just there. So we'll go for that. I'm not gonna have an outline, uh, but if I wanted to, I could click that and I could give my shape uh, an outline you can also choose the size or thickness of the outline so for instance if we went for orange and did it quite thick when we draw it you can see it's got a thick orange border so once you've you're happy with the color once you're happy with the shape that you've chosen you can then draw it in I'm just gonna move my uh, logo and as you can see you can do that by selecting the layers so at the moment I'm drawing on top of my original image I can then use this tool the arrange tool to move the layers around on it so there's a little bit more central that's close enough if I was to select this layer whilst I do my drawing so if I then go drawing shape as you can see, the drawing goes over the top of that layer. So again, where you, wherever you want your shapes, lines, images to be, you need to make sure that you've selected the appropriate layer when you're adding things. You can also hide layers quite simply. You can also duplicate layers as well if you want. So now I've got two logos. For now, I'm happy with how that looks. It's not exactly the most designy thing you'll ever see, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just really showing you all of the different tools that you can use. So once I've added in my logo and drawn my little shape, I'm gonna add some text. So the text option uh, is down here, the big T. Click add new text. It will give you some random text so that you can see how it will look when it's added in. The first thing I'm gonna wanna do is change the color so that I can actually see my text. Go for black. You've also got loads of different fonts, but the first thing I'm gonna do is type what I want. So I'm just gonna type, we are open. Using this as a reopening image. Where should we put it? I'm gonna put it here. What I'm gonna do is space it a bit better. So at the moment I've got it centrally uh, aligned, but you can align it left if you want, or you can align it right. I think align it left so that it can go next to the logo. You can also change the size of your text down here. So you select the text you want to change the size of, and then increase it or decrease it using that size toggle. You can also type in the size if you have one specifically that you'd like. That's not too bad. You can also bold, italicize, um, make it all uppercase or all lowercase. And um, you can also space out the lines so you can have bigger spaces between words. And you can also space out the letters so that you have more of a gap between each letter. I think something like that doesn't look too bad. You can also add outlines to the text. 
you can add a background if you want and you can add shadow to the text too to give it a little bit of depth I'm going to leave it as it is and here is where you change the font so they give you quite a few different fonts but you can also add fonts if you want to um, there's loads of different fonts that you can choose from and you know it really depends on what sort of design you're going for um, I quite like a dolphin I think it looks quite neat I think it looks better bold but for this text it doesn't make too much of a difference so now you can see that I've got my text layer here and my logo layer there and then the main image layer here which is the one that I'm editing over the top of so now that I've shown you how to add text I'm going to show you how to remove the backgrounds so we go to the cutout tool and now we have a few different options for how we want to remove the background so you've got the shape cutout basically whether you choose keep so if we choose keep that will basically only keep the section that we've selected if we choose remove that will just remove the selection that we've se selected as we want to be removing the background we want to use the remove option you've also got different shapes that you can use and you can change the softness as to how how many pixels they sort of leave around the edge you can see there that it's slightly blurred around the edge whereas if I went for none it's a much harsher line sometimes when you're moving removing backgrounds you might want to go for a light or medium softness uh, just to make it look a bit more natural um, but again it really depends on what you're trying to do the other thing that you can do which is quite handy is extract what you're removing as a separate layer so if I was to choose the magic cutout which is the option that I usually use you do also have draw cutout and lasso cutout but magic cutout basically will select the background depending on the color so for instance here I've just selected most of the blue you can also increase or decrease the tolerance so a higher tolerance means that it will remove more whereas a lower tolerance means that it will remove less what I tend to do is remove the background using the cutout tool around the areas of you know say individuals or in this case buildings and then once I'm happy with how it looks around uh, the sort of main focus area I'll then use the other tools to remove the rest of the background so for instance I've almost got rid of the majority of the background here as you can also see this isn't impacting our um, logo image or our text but it will impact the drawing that we've added if we was to click there see for instance it removes our drawing again that's all because at the moment we're just working on this one layer so now that I'm fairly happy with that I'll remove the rest of the background with the shape so I can then take out big chunks so now I'm going to do is use the draw cutout increase the size and I'm just going to draw around the areas that I want to cut out that have just sort of been left over again you can increase the size and the softness if you don't want it soft at all you can use that and it will just delete things straight off if you do want some of it left you can keep the softness high I tend to work with a slight bit of softness just because it helps to preserve the pixels around the thing that you're trying to keep if I was doing this properly I would spend a bit more time on this but as I'm doing it for this tutorial video I'm just going to do this quickly so it won't be quite as neat as it could be as you can see I've accidentally deleted a chunk of the building there but that is okay so now that I have removed the background I think I'm going to add a solid color over the back of the image so to do that I'm actually going to create a new layer so here you can add a new layer I'm going to leave it as empty I'm going to move it to the bottom so that it's behind all of the layers at the moment this layer is locked so if I unlock it that will mean that I can move it around so I go to drawing, go to the shape that I want 
So I'm going to go for a purple background, see how that looks. Not amazing, but not too bad. So another thing that you might want to do is adjust the colors of layers. So I can do that through the adjust tool here. You can change all sorts from the vibrancy of layers to the saturation. You can make it black and white. You can invert the colors. And again, you can do that for individual layers. So if you wanted to do that for your logo, for instance, you can do that here. As you can see, my logo is changing color now. And something else you might want to do is to blur either backgrounds or foregrounds. So for instance, if I wanted to blur this entire British Museum, I could do that. So again, select the layer that you want and you can blur the whole thing. Again, it's blurred the uh, box at the top here because that's all part of this layer. Or if you wanted to, you can just blur specific parts. So there's a few different tools here. For faces, you can use the heel slash repair and that removes blemishes. Sharpen or blur or the dodge slash burn. In general, I tend to only really use the blur tool here. Um, sometimes the sharpen. Again, you can increase or decrease the size, increase or decrease the softness, and you can also change the strength. So if you have it on 100, let's just make this quite large and then you uh, blur something, it becomes quite blurry. If you have it on fairly weak and you blur something, as you can see, it's not quite as blurry. So you can use this for lots of things if you just want to blur specific areas of an image um, or if you wanted to, for instance, blur people's faces. And um, this is a really handy tool to use. So I've taken you through quite a few of the different tools that you can use on this platform. And there are other things that you can add, such as elements like shapes. And again, some of these you'll have to pay for. You've got the liquify uh, option here, which again, you're probably not going to use, but it's good to know that it's there. So you can sort of like swell parts of the image. As you can see, it's sort of distorting the image there. That might be something you want to do. Loads of different effects. These are basically like um, Instagram filters. Um, again, you've got the filters here, which we've gone through. The last thing that we've not looked at, but you might be interested in is the crop. So you can basically crop out chunks of your image. So that's the basics of how the platform works. Again, if you wanted to take more time, you can use it to create some really nice looking images. What we're going to do now is I'm going to show you how you could use this platform to create a uh, GIF or some people call them GIFs. Okay, so I've taken this image from the Smithsonian's open source image library. It's a portrait of a man by an unknown painter of an unknown sitter. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, some of the tools that we looked at earlier to edit this image. We're going to try and make it so that he will wink. So I'm going to get on with that. We're going to speed it up and you can see how you can create a GIF using this platform. What we'll do is uh, to make it so that it looks like it's animated, we need to make multiple images as the eyelid moves down and moves up. So as we go through, we'll sort of save images as the eyelid closes. And then when we come to make the GIF, we can choose the speed to make it look like uh, he's winking. So let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is duplicate the layer so that we then have one to work from and one to use as the main subject of the GIF. Once we've done that, we then want to use the cutout tool to cut out a section of the eyelid but we're actually going to keep that layer so we can then reuse it uh, to animate the eyelid closing. We then want to start slowly moving the eyelid down so that it looks like the eyelid is closing. When we get to a certain point where it looks like it's a little bit more closed, we'll then save that as one image. Again, we'll move it slightly further down, save that as another image and keep doing that until eventually we have a series of images, four or five, 
where the eyelid slowly moves down the eye. We'll then use these images to animate it into a GIF uh, through the platform Giphy. You'll need an account to use Giphy, uh, but once you've made one, you then just select the images that you want to use, and that will then import them into the website. So you can make the image, make the animation quicker by changing the duration. There we go. That's a bit quick. There we go. And that's how you would animate an image using this image editing software. Once you're happy with it, you can add decorations if you want. So, hey. Make it sparkly. And then once you're done, continue to upload. Upload to Giphy. And then once it's done uploading, you'll be able to save it and you can share it on your social media, um, add it on your website, whatever you want to do with it. So I hope that you've found this tutorial useful. Pixlr is a really good platform for editing images online. You don't have to download anything. You don't need an account. You do have to close the occasional advertising pop-up, but that is not the end of the world. If you're feeling a little bit more confident, you can have a look at uh, Pixlr E, which is the more advanced version. It's, you can do pretty much the same stuff, but the difference is, is that it looks a lot more like uh, a platform like Photoshop, for instance. Um, whilst you can do the same things, the tools are um, laid out better and you have more options for how you use those tools. So whilst um, Pixlr X is a really good platform, really easy to use, you might find that you can do more and you can experiment with more uh, by using Pixel RE. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial and best of luck with your image editing.